It seems like there's a new company every week, isn't there? Well, the product we're covering today is from a brand that I had not come in contact with before this controller, but they do have other products, so they must have been around for a bit of time. 2016, according to their website. It's called the Mamba One, and it just released. It's available in both see-through white and black. Now, the good people at Mamba have agreed to give one of these bad boys for giveaway, so please stay tuned for instructions on how to participate. First off, they ain't playing, because by default, it comes with both the controller, of course, but also the dock and a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And while that is not unheard of, it still is not standard by any means. It retails the exact same price as another very popular product that also offers a dock and a dongle included, which is 70 US dollars. And much like the other product, the dongle can be stored into the dock. Now, a striking aspect of this gamepad, and one you may have noticed already is, where is select and start? Now, as you can see, the bottom middle portion of the controller houses them both, as well as home and capture. Now, let's list the types of buttons that we have. D-pad, shoulders, the four back paddles, and function ones are all on tactile units. Face buttons are membrane, a stiff one. Both triggers and sticks are hall sensors, which offers greater precisions in the right hands, low dead zones, and have very much lower risks of drift over the product's lifespan. Before moving on, this is a nice D-pad, and if you're familiar with the shape, expect no less. It's holding a candle to the series controller, the Apex 4, the Stealth Ultra, and it definitely locks you into a direction with zero risks of misclicks to adjacent cardinals. The triggers, they're okay, but still not my favorite. They're not bad by any means. I just prefer a bit more traveling distance on gradual triggers is all. Good news for the ones who are opposite to me as this product has hair triggers. Now, hair triggers are switches that'll reduce the travel distance to an absolute minimum. It often is a favorite for playing shooting games and fighting games as well. Smash Bro comes to mind which, talking about, it is compatible with the Switch as well as PC, iOS, and Android. At the back is an on-off switch and three connectors for docked charging. Now, let's power the quite hard to miss two-inch screen. Sitting at the focal point of this controller, it serves to navigate the features of the Mamba One. And let's go over said features. You have RGB to the sides, which you can set to one of seven different colors or rainbow, and three modes off, breathing, and steady. The faceplate you're looking at is removable. They don't currently sell replacements as far as I know, but if the manual is a reference, they might in the future. Removing the cover doesn't seem to serve much purpose as even with it on, you can change the tips of the analog. You can also add or remove that metal ring, which will help to prevent scuffs as well as offer superior gliding during circular motion. So next, let's talk about rumble, but quickly, this looks like a push button of some kind, and surprisingly so, they seem to move a little, but I have no knowledge of an actual purpose. Best to assume it's just a design decision. I find they look like air pumps for your rumble. <laughs> I always find that seeing the weights make me expect them to be noisier, but based off of this one and the Apex 4, this is nothing but an impression. I'd go as far as to say that this controller sits amongst the upper percentiles for rumble. It's about as good as the series controller. It's shaky, fairly silent, just great overall. It's also addressable to one of four options, off and three degrees of intensity. This is the max level. We're not done yet, but allow me to summarize what this controller is best described as. An entry level, elite type controller. Replaceable sticks, metal rings, hair trigger, four paddles, and even hall sensors. It definitely embodies many of the features of what makes an elite controller. I'd say 80% there and the 20% that isn't is mainly because the face buttons are not mechanical and the software's responsiveness. But I know what's 100%, Game Tech Talk's dedication, my dedication, for bringing you quality reviews aimed at delivering thorough analysis of the user experience on gaming-centric products. Please consider subscribing to the channel if that speaks to you and liking this video if you appreciate the work thus far. I have two things left for us to cover, so let's go obvious, the screen. It is big, bold, and can't be missed. When it comes to features, it's mostly basic, which is fine, 
Hold the home button for three seconds, after which the screen will show you its navigating system, sporting six options. Starting at the bottom, Help shows you a QR code that'll lead you to their hosted fact where you'll find instructions, uh, how to recalibrate your sticks, newer updates if ever they become available, and some other details. Language will offer three options, Chinese, English, and Japanese. Screen slash LED is to address screen brightness and RGBs. In the middle is settings. That'll lead you to four profiles. The first is default and cannot be altered. The other three can, and one of the customizations it offers are buttons. That's where you can make a custom layout. Say you'd want to swap your shoulders and triggers. You can do that. Or change your face buttons to Nintendo's layout. That's where you'd fix that too. You can change every but function buttons, but also this is where you activate turbo for each individual key and also where you map anywhere from one to 20 inputs per paddle, meaning that each paddle can serve as button remapping or macros. The choice is yours. You also have a button to quickly clear your settings to default. Now, the next custom setting is adjusting the stick's curve. You can address them individually and the four options are Default, immediately, delay, and high performance. This further reinforces that this controller is best described as elite, but you are limited to presets. I do wish there was visual support to highlight the curve of each options, but it isn't the case and also is not available on their website, at least as of the making of this video. For anyone wondering, using Gamepad Tester, these have a 0.4% error margin, which is great, but still, I have a preference for the square shape versus the circle, even though the number of games this would affect is pretty small. Moving to the third and last custom settings is vibration, and that you already know there are four settings. So back to our splash screen menu, we'll have mode, gone be the days of holding A plus star for switch mode, or B plus star for Android, or wait, was it X input? I don't know, but my point is, you will never get confused with this one because you have a screen making it very intentional which mode you're on. When using the dongle or wireless, the options are the four we mentioned earlier, but when plugged to a PC, it'll let you choose from X input or the input, another cool feature. By the way, if you choose switch mode, this controller does support six axis gyro. I tested it in Mario Odyssey and so far so good. One other thing to mention is that controller's buttons are persistent to the actual layout. What I mean is if you play your switch, A is still down and will move you forward in menu, and B is still to the right and will cancel in menus. This is easily addressed by making a profile as we said earlier. The last menu option is for pairing. Using your Bluetooth antenna, dongle and wired using the USB-C at the top will just work immediately. There is one last thing before my conclusion, which is the overall ergonomics, and I think it is low-key one of the strongest aspects of this controller. As much as I like the state of the game controller market, I do find that most companies go for the tried and true shapes, which is not a bad thing, don't get me wrong, but it does make the market feel a bit stale at times even despite being the strongest it's ever been. The Mamba One feels different than any other controller I used before. There is just one downside, and for everything else, it's a move in the right direction. Well, sort of. The one downside is due to the shape, but it isn't the shape itself. You have to think that they had to accommodate this big two inch screen, and clearly that requires sacrifice, which is that the function buttons had to go elsewhere. I got used to their placement, sort of, but. I still catch myself reaching for where you'd expect to find them. Another aspect that is subjective is holding that controller puts your wrists in a smaller radius than most controllers. I don't mind that personally, but some might. What I greatly appreciate in exchange is that this controller has the best distance I've ever seen on the four quadrants. That is the left stick, the D-pad, the face buttons, and the right stick. No matter how I hold this controller, nothing is ever in the way. Nothing is ever too far or too close. But that may very well be specific to me. I definitely have average sized hands, and for me, this feels like it is tailor-made to my thumbs. I do not say this lightly, it's an impressive detail to experience, but does this make every other options that much worse? 
Is that the one factor that is so impactful that I would use it over other ones? No, it, it just isn't. And that's the truth. I can manage just fine on most controllers without ever experiencing thumb fatigue. Still, the fact remains that this difference was obvious enough that I immediately knew this felt special in my hands. I do have a few more thoughts to share. Much like the front, these back paddles are ergonomically pleasing to use. The screen, I wouldn't say the software is laggy, but it's not snappy either. I would hope they would accelerate it through firmware updates over time. This product strikes an impressive balance, and when taking the price into account, it's even better than you would expect. This is this product's biggest strength. There is really nothing to shun this controller for. I'll put on the screen a quick chart of the other specs I didn't address in the video to make sure you have all the details. Is this the controller that will destroy any before it? It is not. But I'm willing to bet that there aren't many options that gives us this much for this little. I mean, it's not a cheap controller, but at 70 US dollars, it's quite a bargain if you think of this as elite. It does meet the minimum requirement to be elite also when looking at pulling rate at 250 hertz. If you made it this far, thanks, I greatly appreciate. And this leaves one last thing for us to address, the giveaway. As Mambo will be taking care of the logistics for the winner and I, all you have to do is comment on this video. I tell you, you have to like and subscribe as well, but I'm not imposing that on any of you. You decide if you think I'm worthy, but thank you regardless. I'll be randomly selecting a winner three weeks after the release of this video, after which we'll communicate by email to coordinate with Memba. Now, say you would like to spend a bit more on your controller because you want to get a bit more features as well. I suggest watching my Flight DG Apex 4 review because if this one's a snake, that one's a Komodo dragon. <laughs> get it?